thing that destroys all pleasures. In another narration, the Sahaba they asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is this thing that destroys the pleasures? Qal, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, al -Mut. death. Many, many the angel of death can come. Nowadays we hear, my Iman is in my heart. Justification for every bloody sin she or he wants to do. Who are you to judge? Are you Allah? How dare you judge me? I will answer Allah myself. She's actually hopeful that Allah is not going to punish her for the fact that she's out there portraying her beauty for every man to see. He's actually hopeful that Allah is not going to. When he, what does he say? When you say Allah is going to judge me, not you. But you, so you, you think Allah is going to judge you good? You think Allah is going to take care of you? Allah commanded you some things and He prohibited you, and you disobeyed Him in both, and you're hopeful of Allah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah amma ba'd Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Brothers I was, uh, and sisters I, I was supposed to give a talk on the uh, punishments of the hellfire but last night as I was preparing the talk and uh, I, was, I was reading through this book by Imam Al-Qurtubi Kitab al tathkira um, I was reading the beginning of the book and I and I was going through the first two chapters. In the first two chapters, the Sheikh he, he talks about death and preparation for death. And this book is unreal. It's the first time I was reading through it, and it really affected me. And uh, I actually started to get a lot of anxiety. And I had to close the book. I couldn't go past two chapters. I had to, I had to stop reading it because of the reality of this phenomenon that we call death. And then it hit me, you know, death is actually one of those things that a lot of the time it sparks more fear in a person than sometimes even the hellfire. Because the hellfire seems so far away. But death is very close. So I hope you guys won't mind. But inshallah ta'ala I wanted to share some of the benefits that I read yesterday. Let's start off by defining what death really is. Al Mawt, what is it? Is it just merely your absence from this world? It's a lot more than that. It is the disconnection of your soul from your body and the separation of the two. And then it is your transition from this world to a different world. In that world, you have a life. You have the life of the barzakh, the life in your grave, and then you have the final life, the afterlife, the real life, which you either spend in eternal ecstasy or eternal punishment, based upon how you performed in this world. Imam Qurtubi, rahimahullah, when explaining what al mawt what death is, he said, al-masa'ib. He said, it is the greatest of calamities. His evidence for referring to it as a musibah, as a calamity, is the ayah where Allah said, فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةً فَأَصَابَتْكُمْ مُصِيبَةً الْمَوْتِ They were inflicted with the affliction, with the calamity of death. Now one might wonder and ask, why is al maut why is it a musibah, why is it a calamity? And why is it the greatest of calamities? If one ponders for just a few moments, it doesn't take long to come to the answer. When a person dies, their actions are disconnected now. No more prayers. No more fasting. No more charity. No more repentance. The moment the angel of death takes your soul, what you've done is what you've done. And you cannot add even an inkling onto your skill. Brothers and sisters, read through the verses of the Quran and ponder upon the screaming of the people at the time of their death. What are they all saying? Irjuruni, send me back, my Lord. Why? 
This time, I will give sadaqah. This time, I will be from those who do sajda. This time, I will be from those who pray. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not one who will delay your time. A moment past what Allah had decreed for it for you. The screaming of the people in the, at the time that their soul has been taken is because of their procrastination. Because they've now just been overwhelmed by the reality that their deeds have now ended. And this is why it is a'lam al-masaib. It is the greatest of calamities. Rather, he said, it is the greatest of losses. Ponder with me, my brothers and sisters. Have you ever seen a corpse? Have you ever seen a corpse? Have you ever seen a corpse? It was narrated that a Bedouin man, he was riding on his camel. He came past a corpse, his camel wouldn't go any further. So he came down from his camel. He started to walk around this corpse. He started to just circulate around it. He started to ponder over it. And he started to speak to himself. Rather, he started to speak to the corpse. Malaka, what's wrong with you? La taqum. What's your problem? What's your issue? He speaks to the corpse. It doesn't have a soul in it. What's wrong with you? Why is it that you cannot stand? Malaka, what's wrong with you? Why do you not come back to life? These are your organs, he says. Your brain is intact. Your heart is intact. Your kidneys are intact. Every, everything is there. Why is it that you do not move? Your limbs are salima. They're in place. Your hands haven't been cut off. Your legs haven't been cut off. Everything is normal. What is wrong with you? What's your situation? Why is it that you do not move? Who has prevented you from moving? Who has stopped you from moving? Who is it that has stopped you from walking and talking and speaking? He hears no response. Upon hearing no response, he leaves. One sarafa, he departs. Thinking in a deep state of ponderance. In a deep state of ponderance about the affair, the situation of the corpse. He's amazed. This person was just walking, talking a second ago. Now literally, seconds later, moments later, <coughs> there's no difference. Everything is the same. But his soul has left. And the departing of that soul, it means the end of all of your actions. So the smart person upon hearing this will work hard in preparation for that moment knowing that he or she doesn't know when that could come at any moment the angel of death will creep up on you how many youngsters have we seen dead how many elders have we seen live we have brothers online many of you may have seen a brother from australia was inflicted with cancer Inflicted with cancer. We all saw the video that went viral and he gave up all of his wealth what, for, the, for, for the da'wah and, and, and the sadaqah that he gave towards Africa. The doctors told him, you have six months to live. He has 27 tumors in his lungs. He's got tumors. He opened his mouth. He showed me. He stuck his tongue out. The tumors that are on the roof of his, his mouth. He's got tumors under his eye. He's got tumors all over his body. This man has lived Alhamdulillah, two years. He's still alive. Yet this past summer, a 17-year-old boy, he didn't have any gang affiliation. Just at the wrong place, at the wrong time, wrong place. With the wrong people. Some guys walked by, took a knife, stabbed him right in his chest. Family members that we have, that have gone through surgery, on the verge of death, major operations, yet yeah, they survive. They were supposed to die, so it seems. The youngsters, who look like they have their whole life ahead of him, a car runs him over. Allah takes you with an illness. Nobody knows. 
when their time will come. So the smart one will begin to prepare. Do you know what helps a person prepare, my brothers and sisters? It is to remember death. Will you prepare for something that you neglect? If you neglect your exams, will you prepare for your exams? If you're a person who is neglecting their studies, if you don't think about your studies, you don't think about that exam date creeping up on you, are you going to revise? No. So what helps is to place that exam date before your eyes, to have it scheduled in your calendar, to have it in your phone, to put a poster or a sticker on your wall reminding you, this is exam date. And then every day you get closer, you realize, okay, 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 I'm getting closer now. So you start to work harder the closer that you get. Why is death any different? If you remember death, it will also make you work hard. But it's even more insane the way this works is because death, you don't know when it is. There's not a prescribed time. It could be any moment. So a person who is constantly thinking about death, the way that it deserves to be thought about, is in a state of constant fear. This person is in a state of constant fear. He cannot control himself. She cannot control himself, brothers and sisters. It was narrated from our Salaf that there were men that used to think about the punishment of Allah so much that they were not able to eat food. When they would bring themselves to eat, they would start to cry. They would cry tears that they would feel no hunger. At the times that they are about to go to sleep, they are remembering the punishment of Allah. And as they remember this punishment, they cannot sleep, they spend the whole night crying. It was narrated there were times where they were about to make love to their wives. This is a time when a person is in the highest state of pleasure. You're going to be intimate with your spouse. She's unclothed in front of you, unveiled in front of you. This is the last time you're thinking about anything other than her. Yet they begin to remember the punishment of Allah. They begin to remember death. They begin to remember al mawt They begin to remember A'lam al-Masa'ib, the greatest of calamity. He begins to cry. He begins to shed tears. That he cannot bring himself to be intimate with his spouse to the point where their wives would say, woe to you, destruction to you, because of your excessive sadness. We have not enjoyed a single moment in our lives with you, referring to themselves and their children. Furthermore, there are those hearing ayat in the Qur'an where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking and reminding the people of the fact that their sins will be shown before them. The sins that they did will be placed in front of them on the day of judgment. Remembering as these ayat are recited and they're listening to them, remembering the sins that they've done, the evil that they've done with their tongue, the things that they said. The people that they harm, they disrespected, the backbiting, the slandering. Today, the pornography that you watch, the zina that you do, the masturbation that you come with, the stealing, the breaking of the promises, going back on your covenants, the cheating, the deception, disrespecting, disobeying your parents, the shirk, the bid'ah, the missing the prayers, not fulfilling the rights of the fast, the zakat, all of the other wajibat, the obligations upon you, remembering the sins that you've done, knowing that Allah is going to place every single one of these things in front of you. Nothing is going to escape the accounting of Allah to this weight of an atom. It will be brought in front of you, what you did and what you did not do. The fact that they recalled all that they had done for which will be brought before them. They cried so much that the fear took them away and they dropped dead. They died. Why does this not happen to us? Because we don't think and ponder about death the way that death deserves to be pondered about. We don't think about it with regards to its true reality. Matter of fact, Imam Ibn Rajab al-Hanbali rahimahullah has a book called Taqweef min al-Nar, a book about the hellfire, a very scary book, if only you can read it. At the beginning, he starts off by telling you, he has a chapter just telling you all the narrations of all of the people who were inflicted with illnesses because of their fear of the hellfire to the point that they died. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six. Read the book, see for yourself. But our hearts have become locked, our hearts have become hard. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, is narrated in Sunan Nasa'i and Abi Hurayata radiallahu anhu, قال, قال Rasulullah ﷺ, 
Akthiru, the Prophet وسلم, is commanding us to do something a lot. He said, increase, increase in what? Dhikr, increase in the remembrance. Remembrance of what? Hadi millad that. The Prophet وسلم, said, increase, akthiru, akthiru, increase, dhikr hadi millad that. Increase in the remembrance of the thing that destroys all pleasures. The thing that destroys all pleasures. In another narration, the Sahaba, they asked, Ya Rasulullah, what is this thing that destroys the pleasures? Qal, the Prophet wasallam said, al maut death. Death is what destroys the pleasures. Death is what destroys the pleasures. The Prophet wasallam in another hadith narrated by Ibn Majah, rahimahullah, an Ibn Umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma annahu qal, the son of Umar ibn al-Khattab, he said, Kuntu jalisin ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, we were sitting with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِّنَ الْأَنصَارِ A man from the people of Medina, he came. فَسَلَّمَ عَلَى النَّبِيِّ sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The man, he came and he said salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَالْ Then he said, Ya Rasulullah, أيُّ المؤمنين أفضل Which from the believers are the best? Who is the best believer, Ya Rasulullah? He wants to be from the best, so he asked the question to the one who knows. The Prophet said, أَحْسَنُهُمْ خُلُقَ The best of believers are the ones who are the best when it comes to their manners. They're best when it comes to their dealings with the people. They're best. And remember, when we talk about manners, we don't just talk about manners with the people. The first is manners with Allah. And what is the greatest manner that you have with Allah? Who's going to tell me? What's the greatest manner that you have with Allah? Well, what's the greatest disrespect to Allah? Shirk billahi azza wa jal. The greatest manner with Allah is at-tawheed al-ibadah. That you sing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your worship. And then you have manners with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What is bad manners to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Al-bid'ah. As Imam Malik rahimullah said, anyone who innovates in the religion, it's like he said, Khana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa It's like he said that the Messenger of Allah has de deceived us. The Prophet came, his job was to tell us everything that was good for us and everything that was bad for us. It was obligatory. And you're saying you found something? You found the Prophet's birthday? And the Prophet didn't know? So you're saying the Prophet deceived us. It's bad manners with the Prophet alayhi wa sallam. And then there's manners with the people, then there's manners with yourself. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, don't think, the reason I'm saying this is because nowadays people think as long as you have good manners, you're okay. <laughs> your iman is in your heart. No, good manners first is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the people. The man then asked a the follow-up question. He said, Who from the believers are the most smart? You've told me who are the best. Who are the most virtuous? Which is the most intelligent believer? Who's the most smartest? Who's the most clever believer? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam قال أكثرهم للموت The ones who a lot of the times with regards to death ذكرًا They think about it a lot. Death is always on their mind. Always pondering Any minute the angel of death can come. Any minute I'm here. As I say Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah The angel of death takes my soul. The ones who are living by the advice of the son of Umar ibn Khattab, Abdullah radiallahu anhuma, when he said to the people, when you wake up at night, don't expect to go to sleep. And when you, when you wake up in the morning, don't expect to see the night. And when you go to sleep at night, don't expect to see the morning. These people who live by this statement, knowing any moment I could go, these are the people who what? They're the smartest, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said. وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ Then the Prophet said, then the best from amongst them, the ones who are always thinking about, they're the smartest. But from amongst them, the best one is لَمَّا بَعْدَهُ إِسْتِعْدَادًا The one who after thinking about it, he starts to do, uh, he starts to prepare for this. He starts to do actions of righteousness. He realizes this is a day that's going to come, I'm going to have to face. I have to seek repentance from my Lord for the sins that I've done, and I'm short in my good deeds, so I need to increase them much more. For, and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, أُولَٰئِكَ الْأَكْيَاسِ أُولَٰئِكَ الْأَكْيَاسِ Akyas, these are the ones who are the intelligent ones. These are the ones who are the smart believers. Another hadith narrated by Imam Tirmidhi, 
the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Shaddad ibn Aws radiyallahu anhu qal al kayyis the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the intelligent one man dana nafsahu is the one who rebukes himself he holds himself to account you did this yesterday repent for it now he says to himself before he sleeps how have you disobeyed Allah today what is wrong with you fix up you swore today you backbited today you slandered today you had negative assumptions about someone today you sat while people were talking about your brother's honor and you didn't defend him you remained silent you rather you enjoyed it a person who looks deep inside of himself he looks deep inside of himself. He realizes the innermost deficiencies of his self. Things that most of us won't ponder. You know, when you see, for example, someone who becomes misguided. Someone who becomes misguided. Sometimes, some of us, we get happy. Oh, yes, he came out. I knew, I knew he was going to be a dodgy guy. Recently, we had someone came out online and things came out about him, right? We all heard about it, right? How many people were excited about this? How many people were excited? We're excited that a person has been destroyed. A person, if it is true, I'm not saying that it is. Wallahu a'lam. Like, are we excited that, this is, that, that, that a person has, has, has been exposed? He's done sins, things for which the help fire awaits him, perhaps? Are we excited about this? These are things that are, that are deep, that are dangerous diseases, that are deep inside the heart. <coughs> the chaos, the Prophet said, is the one man, Dan and Efso. He, he looks deep, he rebukes himself, he puts himself down. He says, you're not better than, than, than so-and-so person. The Sahaba who walked in the face of this earth promised Jannah. Ibn Abi Mulaika, as Imam al-Bukhari narrates in his Sahih, and if I'm not mistaken, he narrates it mu'allaqan. Without a chain, he mentions that Ibn Abi Mulaika said, I visited 70 companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and all of them were scared that they were hypocrites. Who are the hypocrites? They're in the lowest part of the hellfire. Lower than the ones who worship Ganesh. Lower than the atheists. Lower than the ones who worship monkeys and elephants. <coughs> and Sahaba saw themselves to be like them. And they were promised Jannah. They were intelligent. <coughs> they realized if they, if they put themselves down today, inshallah in the next life, fi jannatin aliyah, Allah will place them in high gardens in paradise. And then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said After he rebukes his soul, still talking about the intelligent one After he puts himself down وَعَمَلَ لَمَّا بَعْدِ الْمَوْتِ He does actions that are going to benefit him after death He doesn't just sit there and cry No, he takes action Some of you, the previous talk, it got to you I saw some of you shedding tears, some of you got emotional As we all did inshaAllah May Allah soften our hearts but are you going to take action over that? al Kayis is not the one who just, oh, I remembers it, he cries. And then he goes back and he messages his girlfriend. <coughs> he goes back onto Instagram and he starts searching through that explore page. That explore page is a shaitan. I went, through, I went through and unfollowed everyone that I thought could be, you know, because they say the reason on Instagram you have that is because of people that are recommended. People that you follow and the kind of things that they follow. So I went through every person who had a question mark on him and I unfollowed him. And there's still facade and fitna there. People are still going to go there in the middle of the night. When the doors and the lights are closed, no one can see. He does it, but he doesn't remember. He forgets that Allah is watching. The chaos is the one who's going to make change now. Well, the ages, who is the stupid one? In the context, meaning who is the stupid one? The opposite of the intelligent one. The Prophet said, Man atba'a nafsahu, the one who follows, the one who makes himself follow, hawa'an, his desires. He, pay attention, this is, this is powerful. The stupid one, the dim-witted one, is the one, not, not the one who thinks about death and then he does righteous actions after. Rather, it's the one who follows his desires. وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ And then he hopes that Allah is going to forgive him. Nowadays we hear, my iman is in my heart. Justification for every bloody sin she or he wants to do. Who are you to judge? Are you Allah? How dare you judge me? I will answer Allah myself. She's actually hopeful that Allah is not going to punish her for the fact that she's out there portraying her beauty for every man to see. He's actually hopeful that Allah is not going to... When he, what is he saying? When you're saying Allah is going to judge me, not you. 
What are you, so you, you think Allah is going to judge you good? You think Allah is going to take care of you? Allah commanded you some things and He prohibited you. And you disobeyed Him in both. And you're hopeful of Allah? Wallahi, you're an idiot. Wallahi, there's no nice way to say it. You're stupid. Stop playing with your afterlife. Some things you can't sugarcoat. Stop playing with your afterlife. Fix up now. Anis ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, based on this, he said, bil mawti Death is enough of a reminder for us. It's sufficient. People are always looking for reminders. My iman is low, my iman is low. I'm sinning, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. They fall off. Little things happen and the iman drops. Start hanging around with the wrong crowd, doing wrong things, slipping up. Like, all you have to do is just start thinking about death. How many brothers I know recently going through problems in their life stop coming to classes now? Haven't come back to classes since. Why are you taking out Allah for? My iman is low. I've got problems in my life. You don't understand me, bro. Okay, I don't understand you, but do you understand death? Start thinking about death, bro. The scholars, they say that if a person is in a very difficult situation, no matter how hard the hardship is, let him think about death. Because when he remembers death, he will realize that death is worse than this. And if that person is in a state of excessive happiness, then let him think about death again. And he will realize that this happiness, this happiness is going to go. And the reality is death. Death is going to keep you balanced in every situation. It is the best it is the best of reminders. And that's why Imam Al-Qurtubi rahimullah, he says something powerful in the book. Something very powerful. He says that there are two textual evidences that are powerful. So powerful that if a person ponders on this, it is enough for them to change their life and abandon all the sins that they're doing. The first is the hadith that we previously mentioned. But the Prophet said, dhikra Remember a lot that the, th the thing that destroys all of the pleasures. Remember it. Plenty. Think about it. A lot. Don't leave remembering that. Let it always be on your mind. It will destroy your pleasures. Whatever it is at that time that you enjoy, whether it's a meal, whether it's a woman, halal or haram, that pleasure will go. It will depart from you. He said, That. And then the ayah where Allah said, Kullu nafsin Every single soul shall taste death. In case you are thinking, okay, that destroyer of pleasures, which is death, is not going to come to me. No, then you're reminded in the Quran, you as well. Everyone, me, everyone, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, everyone died. No one is free from that. He said, these two statements, they are concise and comprehensive. You don't need anything else to remind you to have an effect on to make change. He said, but rather the thing is that nowadays people they will look at this one statement, they'll hear it, and it won't affect them. You see a person smoking weed, person with the girl, person disrespecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or his messenger, or any one of the creation, and you say, Akhi, every soul will taste death, fear Allah. <laughs> He's like, that's all you got, bro. I'm not even shedding a tear. His heart didn't even shake. Not even one hair stood up on his arm or the back of his head. Nothing. Why? And nufus al raqida, he says. Well, The hearts have become hard and heedless because of the sins. Our hearts have become hard like cement, like rocks. As Allah said in the Quran, Ashadu al qaswa. There are rocks that are that there, that there are rocks that are that are softer than our hearts. There are rocks that if water was to come for the rock, it would split the rock. Yet our hearts, they don't break. This is a Qur'an upon which Allah said, if the mountain came down, if it came down upon a mountain, you would have seen before your very own eyes the mountain crumble to dust. You would have seen before your very own eyes a mountain crumble to dust. That mountain, are you, is, your, is, is, is your heart harder than a mountain? And the reality is our heart's mind, first and foremost. It's harder than the mountain.
Because I'm not here standing in front of you crying, shedding tears. That shows you the times which we live in, the hearts have become hard. And the righteous amongst us are very few. So the Sheikh said, because of this, we are in need of doing tatwil to our kalam. We're in need of extending our speech and giving long lectures like this. Shouldn't have to. Should have to simply, if you want to talk about death, come onto the stage, onto the mic. Salaamu Alaikum brothers and sisters. Every soul will taste death. Remember, the destroyer of pleasures. Salaamu Alaikum. Everyone should erupt into tears. Everyone should make Tawbah from that point on, but we don't. So now we need to extend our speech. And we need to come with beautiful words and metaphors and similes and punchlines and stories. And ayah from the Quran is not enough. I gotta tell you stories of friends that I know who are young boys that I buried, young girls that are buried. I buried them. Young sisters, they weren't supposed to die. That gets to us more than the words and the statements of Allah. Because the hearts have become hard. Because the sins are too much. So let's go in then. Let's be a bit expansive in our statements. Let's take examples of those who are from their pious predecessors and the way they were when it came to death, the way they related, the way they shed tears. <coughs> and hopefully, inshallah ta'ala, it will soften my heart first and foremost and it will soften the hearts of those who are listening. And death will become an integral part of our thought process. Day to day, we'll think about it non-stop. وَكَانَ يَزِيد الراقشيو يزيد الراقشيو may Allah have mercy on him يقول لنفسه he used to say to himself he said وَيْحَكَ يَا يَزِيد destruction be upon you O Yazid مَنْ ذَا يُصَلِّ عَنْكَ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ who is it that's going to pray for you after you die مَنْ ذَا يَسُومُ عَنْكَ بَعْدَ الْمَوْتِ who is it that's going to fast for you after you die he's trying to tell himself You've only got a limited time. You're praying your five daily prayers, but you're going to wish everything that you could give it up on the face of this earth to be able to pray two rakah before Fajr. When you're in your grave, what's the one thing you're going to want more than anything else that you'll sacrifice everything that you own, every pleasure in this dunya for, is to be able to pray two sunnah before Fajr. To be able to fast Monday and Thursday. So he says to himself, who is going to pray for you after you die? No one. So pray, Yazid. Who's going to fast for you after you die? Fast, Yazid. He says to himself, who's going to please Allah on your behalf after you die? No one. So please Allah today. After that, he used to turn to the people. He said, Ayyuh nas O people, Ala tabkoon, will you not cry? Will you not mourn? Ala anfusikum, baqi hayatikum. Will you not cry over the remainder of your life that is to come? al maut death, with it you have an appointment. wal qabru baytuhu, your grave is your house. wa thara firashuhu, the dirt is going to be your mattress. The mud, the soil that you sleep on is going to be your bed. wa dumu, wa dudu, the parasites, the worms, the creatures, the parasites in the earth, they're going to be your neighbors. The grave is your house. The dirt is your mattress. And the worms that are going to eat through your flesh go inside your ears, eat your brain inside, munch up your heart, your kidney, your liver, everything. They're going to devour you, leave nothing from you. They're going to be your neighbors. He said, anyone who lives a life in fear of this, he is in al fazaul akbar He's in a mighty state of fear. كَيْفَ يَكُونُ حَالُهُ He will say, what will be your situation? What will be this person's situation when he's in the grave? When the worms are eating your ears? <coughs> when the grave, when the grave, that's your house. That's your living room. That's, your, that's everything for you. That's your house. What will be your situation? He wants you to reflect now. Will your situation be of those who will be from amongst the righteous? Will their grave will be made a portion of paradise? Or will you be from amongst those who your grave is made a portion of hellfire? What will be your situation? So my yabki, he used to start to cry until he would become unconscious from that crying. He would lose his senses, he would cry, he would cry, he would fall, he would become unconscious. He said two things. Two things have disconnected me from 
all of the pleasures of this life. The first thing he said, Zikrul Maut, is to remember death. I'm constantly remembering death, so I can't enjoy anything in this life. وَذِكْرُ الْوُقُوفِ بَيْنَ يَدَيِّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And that I, and I remember that I will stand for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These two things have taken away all pleasures from me. I can't enjoy anything. Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. <coughs> Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, the great Khalifa. يَجْمَعُ الْفُقَهَا He used to gather the scholars. فَيَتَذَاكَرُونَ الْمَوْتِ they used to remember death together. Well, Qiyamah, they used to remember the day of judgment. Well, Akhirah, they used to remember the next life. Fayyabkun, they would begin to cry. Hatta ka'anna bayna aydihim janazah. They used to cry as if their own janazah was in front of them. Abu Naim, he mentioned something about Sufyan al And before I tell you this, I want you to understand who Sufyan al is. Sufyan al-Thawri was a scholar, he was a faqih. He had a madhab of his own. It was not just a madhab of Imam Malik, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i, Ahmad, Rahimahumullahu Jami'ah. It was also Imam Sufyan al-Thawri had a madhab, but it never carried on. And he used to teach all day. That was his life, teaching, teaching, giving fatwa, answering questions. People would go to him every day, all day, all year round to benefit from him. The only one time he would stop the classes is in the month of Ramadan, where he would start to give time towards the Quran. Other than that, he was constantly, always, 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 always doing what? He was always teaching. People were always benefiting, benefiting, benefiting from him, studying from him. Now that you've understood that, pay attention to this. Kenneth Thawri, he used to, إِذَا ذَكَرَ الْمَوْتِ If he used to remember death, لَا يُنْتَفِعُ بِهِ أَيَامًا If he remembered death, if he went into a state where he was remembering death, where he was thinking about death, it would overwhelm him to the, to the extent where you would not be able to benefit from him for days. For days he would lose his mind. He wouldn't be himself. He wouldn't be able to teach. If you went to him and asked him a question, فَقَالَ لَا أَدْرِي لَا أَدْرِي I don't know, I don't know. He wouldn't be able to think straight. A man, a scholar, with his knowledge, is like the blood that flows through his veins. It's that natural to him. He is disconnected from the knowledge due to the constant fear that he has of death. وَقَالَ اللِّفَاءِ وَقَالَ اللِّفَافِ مَنْ أَكْثَرَ ذِكْرَ الْمَوْتِ أُكْرِمَ بِثَلَاثَةِ أَشْيَاءِ The one who remembers death, Allah, he becomes honored with three things. تَعْجِيلُ التَّوْبَةِ He becomes hasty to repentance. The one who says, I'll repent when I'm older. I'll, I'll, I'll stop praying when I, you know, sisters, they love to say this. I'll start wearing hijab when I get married. I'll start wearing niqab when I get married. I'll start wearing jilbab when I get married. That's what they say. <coughs> Guys say, when I get married, I'll do this. When I finish uni, I'll do that. When I grow older, I'll do this. When I grow older, I'll do hajj. All of these things. All of these things. I'm young right now. I'm enjoying myself. YOLO, you only live once. That's what they say. It's because they're not remembering death. When you remember death, ta'jeel al-tawbah, you're going to hasten towards repentance. وَقَنَاعَةُ الْقَلْبِ Your heart's going to find contentment. He'll be turning back to a merciful Lord. وَنَشَاطُ الْعِبَادَةِ You're going to be energetic in worship because you're going to remember when you die, all of this is going to be disconnected. You're not going to be able to do anything else. So you're going to be energetic in the middle of the night. You're going to say, let me get in as much as I can. The one who forgets death, he's punished with three things. Tasweef at tawbah, he delays repentance. He says, I'll do it soon. In the future, I'll do it. He's not pleased with anything. He doesn't have contentment with what he has in his life. وَالتَّكَاسِلُ فِي الْعِبَادَةِ he becomes lazy in worship. Do you understand, brothers and sisters? We all, me, 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 I we fall into all of this. We delay, I delay repentance. I'm not content. I'm lazy in my worship. It's because I don't remember death. This is something that's missing from all of our daily routines. A portion of the day that we take out, we just ponder about al maut we just remember this. <coughs> Imam Qurtubi, he says something. He says, after mentioning all of this, he 
He says, Ya Maghroor, oh you deluded one, he's talking to me, he's talking to you, he's talking to everyone. Oh you deluded one, oh you deceived one. Fatafakkar, he says, ponder, think, pay attention. About what? Al Mawt, wa sakaratuhu, and the pain, and the, and, 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 and the agony that you feel at the time of death. And how difficult it is to drink that glass. And how bitter the taste of death is. He said, it is sufficient that death is enough to shake the heart and make it feel fear. To make the eyes shed tears. Remembering death is enough to make you leave the crowds. The biggest problem that we suffer from today is bad companionship in life. We're suffering from bad companionship. We have bad people around us. People don't want to leave their friends. When you're next to those people next time, just start thinking about death. Wallahi, you'll go home. Wallahi, you'll leave. If you, if you really start thinking about death the way that it deserves to be thought about, at that time, you will leave. It will destroy your pleasures. It will cut off any ambitions that you have for the future. He said, have you thought about this, my uh, oh son of Adam, oh child of Adam? Thought about what? The day you will depart from this earth. The day you will be removed from the place that you're standing. The day you'll be taken from this open, vast earth and you'll be placed in a very constricted, tight place. The day you will, be, you, you will betray your friend, you'll leave your friend. Your friend will betray you. You're going to go your separate ways. You're going to leave your brother, your mom, your dad, everyone, you're going to leave them behind. Your wife, they, so, some of us are, get heartbroken. You get heartbroken over a girl. But when, you, when, when, when you're dead and buried, time is going to go past, she's going to get married again. When she gets married again, she's going to find another man. That man, with all the respect, she's going to take him on your very own bed. And she's going to call out his name the way she called out yours. No one's got any time for you. You're going to be in your grave. You're going to be dealing with your own sins if you haven't been forgiven. And you're in this world crying over a girl. That same girl in a second is going to turn on you. And the next man, she's going to call him babes. And the next man, your kids are going to call him dad. That's the world you're living in. And you're crying after this world. What's wrong with you, Pac? My sisters, what's wrong with you crying after boys? Running after this world. People on social media just concerned about their fans and their followers. Mocking the deen for cheap likes, for shares, for followers. Are you mad? Are these followers going to benefit you on the day of judgment? Rather, these very same followers were clicking like every time you post something dumb online and they click like on the day of judgment. What did Allah say on the last page of Surah Al-Ahzab? They're going to ask Allah to curse you. La'nan kabira. A mighty curse. The, the followers and fans of the people that follow you on social media will say, Allah, curse this person, a mighty curse. And give them double the punishment. And these are the people you're chasing after in this life. These are the people that you're following after. You're giving your whole life away for these people. The Sheikh says, Faya jami'ul man. The one who gathers wealth. The one who's gathering wealth. The one who's concerned about money. Clothes, cars, wanna make sure you got the Gucci, wanna make sure you got Louis Vuitton, wanna make sure you got the Ralphies, wanna make sure you got a nice ride, wanna make sure you got a nice house. The one who is Al Mujtahid Fil Bunyan, the one who's striving, striving, struggling. He wants to get a house, he wants to get buildings, he wants to get office, he wants to get career, he wants to get job, he wants to get all of these things. He said, Lay salaka, there is nothing for you. Wallahi, he said, I swear by Allah, from your wealth there is nothing for you except two sheets that you're going to take. All of this money that you gather, if you didn't pay attention, brothers and sisters, pay attention to this. He said, all of that money, that uni loan that you took so you could go and study at university, huh? That mortgage that you took so you could have a house, huh? That haram money that you made. They told you, shave your beard so you worked. They told you, sell alcohol so you worked. What? Out of fear of this wealth that you wanted to gather so you could say I could get a house, so I could get a wife, so I could get married. All of these silly excuses that Allah is not going to have any, any, any time to hear on the day of judgment. We make them today. All of this that we're doing, for all of this money we're raising. He said, what is going to come with you? What are you ultimately going to own? What is going to be in your possession? He said, it's going to be two white sheets. That's it. Two white sheets. They're going to take in your grave. He said, 
He said the best thing that someone said when explaining the following ayah where Allah said, and a lot of people know this verse, right? He said, Where Allah said, do not forget your portion of this world. How many of you have heard that? You know when people say, ah, oh, abandon the dunya, abandon the dunya, but then people say, but didn't Allah say, don't forget your portion of this world? Didn't Allah say, don't forget your portion? That's what people say, right? What does this really mean? He's going to explain to you. He says, it means al-kafir. Al-kafir. The white shroud that your body is going to be wrapped in before it's buried. That is taken from your wealth. When you die, that's your portion of this world. So we have, you should have enough money when you die, after your debts are paid off, that we buy a white sheet for you. And we wrap you in it and we place you in your grave. That's the portion of this world that you shouldn't forget. Who said the cars, the clothes, the money is that? Who said that? قالوا, they said, لا تنسى أنك تترك جميع مالك إلا نصيبك الذي هو الكفن. He said, you will leave everything behind that you own. All of your wealth. The only thing that you will not leave behind. The one thing that will enter your grave. The watches won't enter your grave. The cars, the clothes, nothing. The jewels, the diamonds. Sisters, are you hearing me? Those diamonds, those earrings, nothing. None of that. That wedding ring that you're struggling, that you're, that you're making it difficult for the brother that wants to marry you. That wedding ring is haram anyway because it imitates the kuffar. None of that's going to go into the grave with you. All your, your zevr, your jewelry, nothing. None of that's going to go into the grave with you. Your white sheet that you're buried in, that's what's going to go into the grave with you. And finally, I just want to mention one last thing and I'm done. I want to go back to that hadith for the Prophet ﷺ because we're clearing up misconceptions, that things that probably some people are thinking. The Prophet ﷺ, we mentioned, he said, Al kayisu mandana nafsuhu. And mandana nafsahu. The smart one is the one who accounts his soul. He, he holds himself back. Okay? He, <coughs> he prevents himself from what? From, 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 from doing sins and not holding himself to account. And the ajiz is the one who what? Who follows his desires. He does the sins. And then he hopes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He still thinks that Allah is going to forgive him. This is an issue that we have to address because we have this common problem of hijab is in my heart. My iman is in my heart. Who are you to judge? Why are you judging me? Why, what do you mean? How do you know? How do you know what I'm doing is wrong? Allah is going to judge me. Leave it between me and Allah. They're hopeful. They actually believe Allah is going to be ar rahim to them. May Allah protect us. May Allah be merciful to all of us. We don't want Allah's punishment for anyone. We want Allah to be merciful to you. But you're seeking His mercy in a wrong way. What did the ulama they say? They said, al ajis The one who is the dumb, stupid one. He is the one who he falls short. He doesn't do that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded him. He follows his desires. He wants to sleep with whatever girl he wants. He wants to masturbate. He wants to watch pornography. He wants to smoke weed. He wants to do drugs. He wants to chat to the girls. She wants to go out without makeup. She wants to do that. She wants to go out without makeup. She wants to do that. She wants to put the perfume on. She wants to wear the tight abaya. She wants to wear the tight jeans. But if you've got sisters out there wearing crop tops and hijab, what the hell is this? What? It's not even funny. It's the, it's the end of the world. Crop tops. That's what the stomach is showing in hijab. That's the day we're living in. And she's got the cheek to tell you only God can judge me. She's hopeful in Allah. With a crop top. When Fatima radiallahu anha, the, the woman who's gonna be the, the, the Sayyidah of the women of Jannah, <coughs> she said, When I die and you're buried, you're taking my body to the grave. Place something over my shroud. She's wrapped up in a white cloth, but she said, Place something over my shroud. So people don't see my body parts. She's already covered in a loose white sheet. Yet she wants to be even more modest. She wants to have modesty in death and you want every guy to see the shape of your body in this world? This person is the Ajis. He says only God can judge me. Allah is going to forgive me. No problem. Allah is going to forgive me. I'm going to carry on about my way. Allah is going to forgive me. Allah is going to deal with me. Imam Hassan al-Basri said that a group of people, they hoped in Allah. They had hope in Allah. 
They said, Allah, he's going to be good to me. I have good assumptions of Allah. Hatta kharaju min dunya They left this world, they died. They carried on with that hope. Wa ma lahum hasana. They didn't do any good deeds. They kept saying, Allah's going to judge me. 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 No problem. You're, you're Allah. You're Allah, they say. He's, he's strict. He's harsh. My Allah is merciful. My Allah is love. We're not Christians. My Allah is love, they say. My Iman is in my heart. You see this? You see? But if I don't see, I don't see. No, that's the point. You have no Iman in your limbs. It goes beyond the heart. This cup right here. If I want to know if the water is hot or cold, do I have to put my finger inside? I can hold it from the outside. Every vessel sweats what is inside it. The body is the same. If you have a good heart, it will show in your body. The Prophet said, if the, if the heart is pure, the rest of the body is pure. If it's, if it's corrupted, the rest of the body is corrupted. The rest of the body is corrupted, brothers and sisters. So he said, when they died, because they never had this, this, this accounting of themselves, they carried on with the sins. He said, for them, they had no good deeds. And then, and then when, they, when, they, when the punishment came to them, one of them said, Inni uhsinu dhanna bi rabbi. I said, I had good assumption of Allah. I had husn al I have good assumption. I thought, Allah, Allah, you're merciful. So you're going to take care of me. I had good assumption of you, Allah. What happened? Kadaba, the Sheikh said he lied. This person's a liar. Law ahsan al if he really had good assumption of Allah, la ahsan al amal, he would have had good actions. He would have, so these people, when they tell you that they actually, they're lying, they don't believe it themselves. And then he recited the ayah, وَذَلِكُمْ ظَنُّكُمْ الَّذِي ظَنَنْتُمْ بِرَبِّكُمْ أَرْدَاكُمْ فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ When Allah talked about the people who, be, who didn't think that their hands and their body parts would testify against them, Allah said that these people, they had assumptions about Allah. Their assumptions were wrong. And because of that assumption, now they're being punished. Imam Sa'id ibn Jubayr, he said, deception. Wallahi, he said, Billahi, he said, deception is that a person is consistent upon sins وَيَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْمَغْفِرَةِ He or she is consistent upon sins yet they're hoping from Allah to forgive you. A'udhu Billah, what do you mean you're consistent upon sins you're hoping Allah to forgive you? Baqiyat ibn Walid narrated that a man sent a letter to his, to his brothers and he told them, he said, you're hoping from Allah and your actions are evil. He said, it is like you're beating cold iron. You know why he said that? Because you know when you want to mold iron, what do you do to it? You heat it up, right? If you don't heat up the iron, you can smash it all you want. What's going to happen to you? You're going to get tired. Your arm's probably going to break in the process because of how hot it is and, 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 and the vibrations that are going to go for you. If you keep smashing it, your arm's going to break. You're going to break yourself, but you're not going to build, mold the iron. He said, that's what it's like. You having bad sins, seeking hope from Allah, you sitting, not repenting and seeking hope from Allah is like you're taking cold iron, you're trying to smash it. It's never going to change. I mean, you're never going to have that hope from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's never going to come your way. So brothers, wallahi, I beg you. My sisters, wallahi, I beg you and we end on this. I want you please to ponder every day of the time that the angel of death is going to come and sit at the top of your head. He's going to come with all of his other angels. They're all going to slowly, slowly take the soul out of your body. The angel of death is going to stand at the top of your head. He's going to stand at the top of my head. Think about this, Wallah, he's going to come. If you're a good, righteous soul, we'll tell you, come out to the pleasure of your Lord. But if you're an evil soul, we'll tell you, come out to the punishment of your Lord. And when the soul hears that, it becomes scared, so it, it goes deep into the body. It goes and it clings into the body. So it has to be pulled out, and it's holding into the body. So when it's ripped out and it's pulled out, it rips all of the body as it comes out. It's taken high, to the sky, insulted by the angels on the way, but the doors of the sky don't open for it. It's not taken back down, it's thrown into the grave. By that time, the person has been buried and the soul lands inside of him. The next thing he knows, he's got these two scary looking angels in front of him. Man Rabbuk, who is your Lord? Ma Deenuk, what is your religion? Man Nabiyuk, who is your prophet? Wallahi, he will not be able to answer it if he just memorized it. A parrot, if I say la ilaha illallah to the parrot, will it memorize la ilaha illallah? Does it have any idea what it's saying? No. Many people are just like that. Don't be a parrot in your grave. Because you can't fool the angels and you can't fool Allah. If you die and you have knowledge of la ilaha illallah and you implement it, 
then you're a person who'll be able to actualize it and manifest it in the answer in your grave. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك